Hello, my name is Amanda Carroll, and I am a senior project manager with the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority. And we are here to share with you the biosolids and prepared study. For today's agenda, we'll be going over the project background, project overview, solids production estimates, regulations and trends, management practice survey, market review, and some ongoing work. So a little bit of the project background. Uh, there were landfill slope failures that were attributed to high moisture content waste. This caused some landfills to stop taking biosolids, which forced utilities to find another source for disposal. This resulted in higher transportation costs, and in some cases, it more than tripled their budget. Landfills also increased disposal costs by up to 300%. These challenges faced by the utilities resulted in the need to identify state biosolids opportunities. <clears throat> A request for qualifications was issued early 2020 by the Georgia Environmental Finance Authority in partnership with the Metro North Georgia Water Planning District and the Georgia Association of Water Professionals. Five statement of qualifications were received and scored. Black and Beach was selected and GIFA entered into a contract with them to prepare a biosolids management assessment consulting and prepared study. Hopefully this will help be help, a helpful resource for utilities going forward to not only help with alternatives, but also funding this imp the implementation. I will now turn it over to Steve Simpson and Greg Knight with Black and Beach to discuss the study in more detail. Thanks, Amanda. I'm Steve Simpson with Black and & Veatch, and I want to spend the next few minutes uh, giving you a brief overview of the project that we're conducting. Talk a little bit about the background, the project goals, the tasks that we are undertaking, and the schedule uh, for the study. Amanda mentioned some of the drivers for the study. Uh, as you can see from the graphic on the left, there's been a clear trend over about the last three decades. Uh, the bars represent various uh, point estimates uh, in time where solids production and the uh, proportion of solids being managed in various ways has been estimated. And you can see the clear trend in terms of the increasing blue bars, uh, the increasing trend toward reliance on landfilling as a primary method of disposal for biosolids in Georgia. Uh, obviously, there are multiple uh, factors that relate to that trend, including regulatory actions such as implementation of the 503 regulations, the implementation of the sewage sludge incineration uh, regulations. Uh, so a lot of things have contributed to that trend. Uh, but what's happened in the last few years, as can be seen in the photos on the right, there have been some slope failures at Georgia landfills. Um, and so the past trends are not expected to continue. As Amanda mentioned, the Georgia Association of Water Professionals has a uh, biosolids and residuals committee that did a survey in 2019 about biosolids quantities and practices based on 2018 data. Uh, so one of our goals is to update that survey information with updated information on quantities and practices, technologies and approaches, and to supplement that with feedback on interest that utilities might have in alternative approaches and practices, as well as funding mechanisms. Another one of our goals is to uh, identify what some of the opportunities might be in the state to handle solids differently from practices today and provide some uh, estimates of what that might look like, as well as to identify and document the financing needs and some of the ways that those needs might be met through 
uh, GFA's loans and grants, such as the state revolving funds. The study itself has been broken into a number of discrete tasks, starting with the production estimates um, and uh, estimating quantities to document uh, current and future picture. Uh, to update the survey that I talk about, talked about a moment ago, to look at current and future regulatory issues that might impact biosolids management to look at end use opportunities and technologies uh, in conjunction with uh, landfill opportunities. Uh, and the goal of these tasks is really to end with the development of biosolids management strategies that utilities might choose to employ and to identify ways to fund capital needs that might arise from a change in strategy. Uh, through all these tasks, we have a, a stakeholder panel that's working alongside us. Um, there are utility representatives from across the state uh, representing a wide, wide range of uh, utility sizes uh, that are providing us help in reviewing our deliverables and providing regional specific input on the results. We're performing this study over about a 10 month period. We got started in fourth quarter of last year and with the aim of uh, working our way through the various tasks that we talked about uh, towards the issuance of that final report in early August of this year. So that gives you an idea of the uh, schedule for completion of this study. So one of the first tasks that I mentioned was the production of or the performance of solids production estimates. So to look at both what's happening currently as well as to document what the needs might be in the future. And we, we looked at various ways of summarizing that information and came to the conclusion that uh, presenting that by regional commission might be most, the, most effective because utilities in the same geographic region likely face similar issues and challenges and have the greatest opportunity for uh, approaches which might be mutually beneficial. So we looked at permittees throughout the state in terms of our solids production estimates. You'll see the breakdown there of NPDES or point source discharges as well as land application systems, LAS. Um, and so you can see that we focused on a municipal biosolids for the preparation of these estimates. We use uh, updated information sources to produce these estimates. I'm going to start from the lower left hand side of the graphic. Um, EPA echo data was used. Uh, information on solids production from 78 facilities was available through that information source which fed directly into our uh, estimated 2019 production numbers and to flesh out for other facilities we utilized information from the uh, GAWP survey of 2018 data and the solids production to wastewater flow ratios multiplied by 2019 wastewater flows from EPD uh, to develop those that current picture of solids production. To extrapolate that to the future, uh, we leveraged the ongoing effort for water and wastewater forecasting in the state being done to support the regional water plans and the upcoming updates to those plans. The those projections are based on population projections that were done by the Georgia Office of Planning and Budget published in October 2019. So those population projections out to 2060 were used to develop projected wastewater flows and in conjunction with our uh, solids production per MGD from current situation were then utilized to develop what the future picture looked like for solids production. So here are those results. The blue bars indicate 
2019 solids production data, and these are the bars are organized by a geographic uh, regional commission level, as we talked about. The green bars being what that future picture is going to look like, and the diamonds indicating what the percentage change in solids production is going to be, some of which approach near doubling over the planning horizon. So the, the takeaway from this picture is that our current challenges with biosolids management uh, are projected to increase uh, in the future along with uh, increased solids production. Thanks, Steve. Um, so I'm going to start with just a few highlights from the uh, the regulatory review that we uh, that we conducted as part of the um, as part of the study. Um, so starting with landfill disposal of of biosolids, um, there are Georgia rules in place for the management of um, you know um, solid waste, uh, which basically um, incorporate. The, the federal requirements and historically, you know, those have kind of focused on uh, for biosol is fairly simple measures such as the paint filter test and to toxicity criteria leaching procedure, which are relatively easy um, tests to meet. But be because of the um, the uh, some of the issues that Amanda and Steve mentioned with the landfill slope instabilities, um, there's changes expected uh, during this year with respect to the um, to the to the solid waste rules, um, in particular with a focus on management of high moisture content waste. Um, uh, basically, uh, uh, anyone operating a landfill receiving over a, a certain proportion of biosolids or high moisture content waste, including biosolids, uh, will have to have a high moisture content management plan in in place. Um, and we're expecting that to kind of continue the, the pressure on the, the cost and the availability of landfill disposal that, um, you know, that Steve uh, referred to. Um, in terms of um, beneficial use for land ap application, um, this is covered by uh, what everyone in the industry knows as the uh, the 503 regs. These are uh, federal regulations, uh, but again, they're rolled into uh, the Georgia rules. The Georgia rule is 39136.17, uh, which basically implements the requirements of 503 in the state of, of Georgia. Um, and basically, there are two categories of biosolids that you uh, that you can uh, produce. Um, the, uh, the 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 kind of um, the highest class category is class A. A lower class category is is class B. Um, and basically, uh, there are more restrictions on class B land application than uh, than than class A. In particular, in Georgia. Uh, one of the requirements for Class B land application is that you're not allowed to field store biosolids prior to spreading on the land, and that that makes kind of Class B programs a bit more challenging in Georgia than they are um, elsewhere. In terms of Class A um, biosolids, uh, if you meet the the requirements that are listed there for Class A biosolids, and you also meet uh, pollutant limits, which measure a measure of the metals content in the biosolids. Um, then you can uh, achieve what's termed as exceptional quality biosolids, and then essentially the uh, the product is uh, then managed as an agricultural product uh, product um, with far less restrictions, uh, providing you also get uh, Department of Agriculture approval either as a, a fertilizer or a soil amendment. Um, and then there are also additional requirements to meet for what's termed vector attraction reduction, which basically just means um, stabilizing the biosolids enough that they don't attract pests when they're applied um, in the field. Um, there has been quite a lot of activity on um, on on biosolids recently in the industry. Um, the EPA officer officer of inspector general came out with a report. Um, which basically was fairly critical of how uh, EPA has been managing, this is a US EPA has been managing um, biosolids, uh, you know, historically, and they, they've identified 352 unregulated uh, pollutants that uh, are not currently kind of regulated by the biosolids um, regulations. Uh, there was an immediate response from this um, by EPA Office of Water. 
And then more recently, uh, there's been uh, a fairly thorough rebuttal by um, a team of biosolids researchers with a lot of, of experience in biosolids. Um, and basically, they found that only a very small fraction of these pollutants of, of concern actually warranted any further study. Um, and they also commented on the kind of language that was used in this report. You know, it was um, it was fairly kind of, um, you know, inflammatory in a way, in, in the way that some of that kind of report was was written. So there's been a lot of comment on that um, in, in the industry. Um, so just to kind of summarize in terms of um, ramifications for solids management, in terms of landfilling, um, you know, we're expecting to see continued pressure on, on, on landfilling going forward for land application. Um, Class B uh, is is possible, but it is it is challenging. Uh, there are also potential local jurisdictional resistance in some counties to uh, to Class B land land application, and then everyone's keeping a close eye on the kind of situation with PFAS, um, and we are seeing restrictions on PFAS um, in some of the other states in the um, in the US. Um, and then I haven't covered it in detail, but incineration, obviously, Steve mentioned towards the, the, the start. Um, you know, one of the challenges there has been the uh, the permitting side of things. The, um, there's been additional requirements for air permitting that have made um, incineration um, much more difficult to uh, or much more expensive to operate um, because of uh, requirements to meet the uh, the emission standards. Um, and generally, that's why we've seen a kind of declining trend in incineration in the, in the state. Um, and then just to touch on a few kind of highlights of the, uh, the management practice survey that we conducted, um, we did send the survey out to every permittee in the um, in the state of, um, of of Georgia, and as kind of Steve mentioned, you know, um, what we wanted to do with part of this is to get feedback on um, GFR and, and uh, state funding opportunities uh, to update some of the previous surveys that have been conducted in in the state uh, to determine what the interest is in potential regional strategies for managing biosolids. Um, we got a fairly similar response overall to the previous survey that had been uh, conducted. There's some statistics in the in the table on the left, bottom left there. Uh, but I just wanted to cover a couple of highlights and we can get into further uh, details in the Q&A if, if people are interested. Um, but on the top right there, you can see a chart summarising basically the current survey that we've conducted compared to the previous survey. As you can see, um, very similar results in terms of the proportion of people that are kind of, um, uh, you know, sending biosolids to different uh, end use categories. And then on the bottom right, what you can see is the biosolids disposal cost per, per dry tonne um, for data from 2018, 2019 and 2020. And really what you can see there is obviously the, you know, the, the trend of increasing cost in biosolids management is something that we're seeing, um, you know, kind of con continue. And that was borne out in the in the recent results um, as well because of these pressures on landfill disposal that we uh, that we mentioned. So. Um, and just to cover a few details of the uh, of the market review that we uh, that we've conducted, um, we did have um, a kind of methodology to the way that we uh, we went about the market review. The first step of this was to define uh, the type of product characteristics that we see uh, or that we're able to produce with uh, with biosolids. So dry, you know, dried product, compost, uh, class A cake, class B cake, etc. The next step was then to um, to identify potential target markets that may be able to make use of biosolids products uh, and then to uh, basically go out and interview uh, market gatekeepers, which are really kind of the key folks uh, in the field who know that know what's happening with these different uh, markets and are able to offer advice on the potential for uh, beneficial use of biosolids products. Uh, we then estimate the potential demand for uh, for biosolids products. So, for example, you know, in in agriculture, we would look at um, the the number of acres of um, different types of crops that may be suitable for biosolids um, uh, land application, and then based on that, we can estimate uh, the the, you know, the potential um, market. Uh, demand and how much market penetration we need in order to make beneficial use of the biosolids products that are um, that may be available 
um, in, in the state. Um, and kind of um, skipping through to the kind of overall results of this uh, of this effort, what you see on the chart there is in the red is the um, the estimated solids production in the state, and then in the blue uh, the estimated market potential also in um, in kind of dry tons of, uh, of of biosolids per year in terms of how much biosolids may we be able to make use of if we could fully kind of saturate those uh, those markets and what you can see from this is really that uh, we only need a very small market penetration two percent estimated market penetration to make use of all the biosolids in Georgia so really there's a tremendous potential um, there for biosolids if we're able to um, you know to kind of capitalize on these opportunities and and the the the, the, the you know the by far the biggest opportunity there is uh, for use in agriculture as you can see by the um, by the bar on the uh, on the bottom there. And then in terms of ongoing work, uh, we're currently working on a technology evaluation to look at uh, what technologies are available for, um, you know, for processing biosolids. We'll be producing some fact sheets as part of that. Uh, we're reviewing landfill capacity for, uh, for continuing to receive biosolids, uh, factoring in, you know, the high moisture content waste uh, requirements that we that we mentioned and also looking at municipal solid waste co-processing opportunities um, and then in early August we're expecting to issue the uh, the, the first issue of the draft final report and that will uh, contain uh, overall recommendations for biosolid strategy including recommendations for uh, for funding of biosolids project uh, projects as well. Um, and with that, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody for listening to our, our presentation. Um, please feel free to ask additional questions in the uh, in the Q and A session. Um, and if anybody would like to reach out to us after um, after today, then our email uh, contact details are on the screen. If you would um, if you'd like to get in touch, thank you very much. <laughs>